Hi. Later this month, the fifth conference of states parties to the Arms Trade Treaty will convene in Geneva, Switzerland, from the 26th to the 30th of August. This is the big, the major annual conference, uh, which is often preceded by some preparatory committees, but this is a major conference uh, concerning implementation of the Arms Trade Treaty, which is attended, of course, by states parties to the treaty, but also by signatories, observers, uh, multilateral organizations, and of course, civil society organizations. We at Project Plowshares will be there as part of the Control Arms Coalition, and this is always a great opportunity to, to scrutinize progress, to assess how well the states are actually uh, implementing the, the obligations of the Arms Trade Treaty, and to, and to consider best practices and lessons learned that can in turn lead to more effective implementation uh, going forward. Uh, in terms of the, the context under which this, con this conference will take place, I think front and center for many people is, is the situation with arms exports to Saudi Arabia. There are several other challenges uh, to the arms trade treaty, but perhaps none as egregious as sales, continued sales of, of weapons to Saudi Arabia because of its, of its appalling record of, of, of compliance with human rights uh, uh, law and international humanitarian law, uh, but also because it, it is the leader of a military intervention that has inflicted tremendous catastrophic uh, uh, damage to its neighboring country, uh, Yemen. So Saudi Arabia has, to, has been uh, really a case study of what ought not to be done in the context of the arms trade treaty and in the specific context of arms exports, exports authorizations when there is a risk of misuse. In the case of Saudi Arabia, this case, this risk has long been apparent, yet countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Spain, Germany have been arming Saudi Arabia continuously for the, for, the, for the past few years. Just a year ago, at last year's Conference of States Parties, and this one was held in Tokyo, I recall that there, were, there was an article in The Economist, which is one of the most prestigious magazines in the world, and uh, rather than boost the arms trade treaty and, uh, and, and, and uh, emphasize how it is an effective tool to tackle the irresponsible trade in conventional weapons, it was casting doubt on the treaty's effectiveness. And, and it spoke of a treaty, a major multilateral United Nations instrument, which has had little impact. Now, the article is as relevant today as it was back then. And the main reasons given in this article were not that the treaty is weak itself in its provisions or, or that it is not a, a modern treaty that takes into account things, important things, dimensions, such as gender-based violence, the possibility of diversion, etc. The problem had to do with compliance that states, parties, and signatories, and others that were, that were uh, uh, soon to join the treaty, were, were basically contravening the treaty in real time uh, with, with, uh, with arms authorizations that go against the very reason why the treaty was created in the first place. And, and once again, there is no more egregious case than arms sales to Saudi Arabia. So uh, with the Control Arms Coalition, we will, will, we will attempt to draw attention to the, the problematic transfers to Saudi Arabia and other countries. That this, is, this is certainly not the only case where, where we see problematic practices. But we will also welcome some positive aspects of, of the, this year's conference. Among them, the, the, the focus on gender-based violence, which is uh, really a, 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 a very important dimension that is often underlooked, and and, and uh, the the many ways in which in which violence, armed violence, disproportionately affects affects individuals based on gender considerations, is is something that needs to be given uh, concrete attention in order to find effective solutions to address those to address those situations. So, gender-based violence is a, is a very welcome uh, focus on the conversation. And we are we are also going to be to be welcoming the the, uh, the most recent additions accessions to the arms trade treaty because universalization is seen to be a, uh, an aspiration uh, for 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 the treaty regime in order to make it more effective. Now Canada <coughs> will be there. 
uh, but not as a state party. Uh, and it will, it will miss the, the, the cut, if you will, by only a few days or, or a couple of weeks. Canada recently deposited its instrument of accession to the arms trade treaty at the United Nations in New York. But for that instrument to take effect, uh, you have to wait 90 days. So can, uh, by the time of the, the actual dates of the arms trade treaty conference, the 90 days will not have yet passed. Canada will become a state party as of September 17th. This is, a, this is a development that we widely welcome. We have long been advocates of the arms trade, treaty, arms trade Treaty in general, globally, but here specifically we have been urging the Canadian government to, to join the treaty without delay. Uh, but we cannot forget about, about the, the, the context and the reality under which Canada is, is joining the Arms Trade Treaty. And, and uh, top of mind, once again, is Saudi Arabia and the fact that Canada is engaged in multi-billion uh, dollar sales of weaponry to Saudi Arabia, uh, about which there has there there has been a very clear risk of misuse and, in fact, documentary evidence of misuse. Uh, yet Canada continues arming Saudi Arabia. So while we welcome the accession to the Arms Trade Treaty, on the one hand, we are we are uh, necessarily going to draw attention to the unfortunate fact that as of day one. Canada will find itself in a situation of non-compliance with the treaty because of the of arms exports to Saudi Arabia that contravene the, the spirit, the specific obligations, and the, sp the specific prohibitions uh, um, of the arms trade treaty. <clears throat> it has now been nine months since the Canadian government under Prime Minister Trudeau said that it would review arms, ex our arms exports to Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and uh, the, while this was a welcome development, uh, we, are, we are concerned at the fact that one, there have been no further updates on this review, and secondly, it has not con yet concluded. And in, in all of, while this is, this is happening, um, Canada continues to ship armor vehicles to Saudi Arabia, some of which have been known to be weaponized and, and, and modified after the export, some of which have been involved in violent crackdowns of Shia minorities in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia, some of them have been, no, have been known to be involved in, in, in security operations where dozens of civilians have been killed. Uh, and these shipments uh, are just continuing unabated as the review takes place. It is high time the government of Canada either conclude this review or, or provide a public, a public update of what is happening, especially in the wake of, of, uh, of uh, Khashoggi, the, the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi already uh, almost a year ago, which, uh, which really made uh, major media headlines uh, around the world and prompted some, of, some governments, including the Canadian one, to look more closely at its exports of, of weapons to Saudi Arabia. We have partnered in Canada with uh, with colleagues uh, that also follows uh, uh, from slightly different angles uh, these these arms exports, including Amnesty International Canada, Oxfam, Oxfam Quebec, and Oxfam uh, Canada, the Rideau Institute, Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East, and others to to press the government to really give us some answers and give them uh, to us promptly. Because as I said, while this review is taking place, uh, Canadian made armor vehicles that are being shipped to Saudi Arabia. And we, uh, and we feel that every vehicle that, that makes it to Saudi, to Saudi soil increases the possibility of misuse of Canadian-made goods against civilians or to undermine peace and security, uh, as has been the case.